All right, guys, we got Paul down here today, and we are going to do another one of my world famous customer showcase videos. World famous, he says. <laughs> so uh, let's get started right here. It says Ibanez on it. Yeah, you can tell because it's got that, that hot pink in there that it's straight up 80s. Straight um, up 80s. But what it is, is, um, and I would, I would, I'm sure uh, our friend Phil would probably put this up as well. I would call this the greatest Super Strat guitar ever made and of course it's because it was designed by the one and only Steve Vai. <clears throat> that is a 1989 Ibanez Gem VBK which is technically the second generation of the Ibanez Gem. The first one was obviously the Loch Ness Green, uh, the Shocking Pink and the Desert Yellow. Those were the yellow ones uh, the hot pink ones that match this this right, interior, right? And the Loch Ness green one, which were signed by Steve Vai. They only made 777 of those. They're all hand signed by Vai. Then this one came out in 1989. It actually it might have been 80, 88. Excuse me, 88 to 92. This right. is an 89, um, and it's the first rosewood necked gem that they released. With the you know the vine the vine inlay or the tree of life inlay I think is what they call that, um, Demarzio PAF Pros, Ibanez Gem, uh, proprietary pickup in the middle. They've changed these now. Um, I think it was 1992 or 93 they switched over to the Evo pickup, and now I think there's something called the Breed pickup in them now. But these are the original Ibanez PAF Pros that come with it. It's got the monkey grip, right? The edge tremolo, um, and this is a screaming guitar. 24 frets, the last four scallops. This was the first couple of years where they started to to um, lay that down in there. Really Recessed deep, it in huh? there, yeah. Recessed. It, yeah, it was dug out like there. This is The story behind these was uh, Vi was playing Charvel guitars. He had a green Charvel, which you probably, if you ever saw the old Alcatraz video for God Bless, God Bless Video or old pictures of Vi, he had a green Charvel sort of Strat hybrid um, that I think was designed by a guy named Tom Anderson and another guy named Joe Despagne. And... Uh, Vi no longer wanted to play the Tom Anderson stuff on the road because obviously it was getting old and beat up. So he was looking for somebody to make him a mass-produced guitar. Um, he went to Ibanez. Um, he went to Charvel Jackson. He went to a couple of different places. Ibanez sent them sent him a copy of a, a guitar they used to make called the Maxis, M-A-X-X-A-S. Okay. Um, and it had some of the design ideas that Vi wanted to it. He liked it. Um, sent them back a couple of drawings. Hashino Electronics, which is uh, the company that does it. Hashino Gaki is the company that makes Ibanez in Japan. Um, listened to his design ideas. Sent him back the Loch Ness Green one that everybody is real familiar with. Um, and he wanted it and said, yes, make these. So this is, for my money, the best super strat they've ever made. Um, it does everything you want it to do. They actually made a seven-string version that looks a lot like this. Uh, a couple of years later, called the Universe. Right. Uh, the Ibanez Universe looks just like this, only it's a seven string, same sort of Steve Vai green accoutrement. Um, and it is a fantastic guitar. Um, it is everything you would ever imagine it should be. You can get nice, crystal clean tones out of it, uh, as Vai is known for getting those nice, you know, stratty tones that you look for. Um, and it screams uh, the way it's supposed to scream, like you would expect. These, those PAF Pros are fantastic pickups. And of course, it's got the monkey grip, which is, you know, that way if you don't have a case, you can just take it anywhere you want, just sort of walk away with it. There you go. You know what I mean? And it's funny, yeah. too, because, um, you know, Vi has massive hands. And if you've ever seen Steve Vai's fingers, like, double the length of my fingers, those are Steve Vai's fingers. He's got these long, massive hands, so this monkey grip has to be big enough for his hand. This is essentially the same dimensions uh, as his hand. My hand fits in it. But right. you can see it's almost like brass knuckles too. If you want to fight somebody, there you, you go. Hit them with your guitar. Yeah. Um, but he has massive, massive hands, and uh, I love this guitar. I've wanted one of these since I saw the original Loch Ness green ones. I would love to find a Loch Ness green one, but they are way expensive on the used market. You'll spend five grand for one. Uh, this was significantly less than that. I think that's really cool how he's got the scalloped fretboard here. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, let's face it. Um, I think the first guy that was was popular popularized that would be Blackmore. But this is, I mean, you get into here. I, I don't know. I, mean, I don't know my fingers. I don't have. I mean, Vi's got really, really long fingers. I don't know what his tips look like. But to get in there and make a, you know, a vibrato. I mean, you get up there. That's tight. 
Try yeah. putting your finger there and try and get yeah. any sort of, you know, inside the scallop vibrato, vibrato in there. You can't do that. Um, Vi can, obviously. It's ridiculous. These are ridiculous guitars. Now I've smudged it all up with my greasy hands. <laughs> well, it's definitely the best thing that's happened to Ibanez, I think, probably ever. Oh, no, I mean... Is they their were, affiliation with Steve Vai. Yeah, Ibanez, by the way, mm -hmm. uh, is what they were originally. Um, and, of course, we all bastardized the pronunciation. Um, they were making decent guitars. They made decent guitars. But when Vi did this guitar, um, it became the flagship of that company. And then, of course, they made the cheaper version of it, which was the RG series, the RG550s, which are essentially the same guitar with less... Doesn't have the monkey grip, uh, doesn't have the same uh, inlays on the neck, but for all intents and purposes, just about the same guitar. And all of the gems, the first generation gems, have the same setup with the exception of this one was the only one with the rosewood fretboard in, in the early part. The other ones all had maple fretboards with the disappearing pyramid inlay. That happened. Right. Um, this was his first rosewood one, and now all they're all rosewood. The vine inlay is pretty much all the... Vi guitars now have that pretty much exclusively with the exception of, of the uh, anniversaries. Um, and now the only one that they make um, that you can get that's his signature is the, it's basically the, the Gem 7 VWH, which is the Vine White, I guess is oh, what they yeah, call it. Yeah, yeah, I know a guy that's got one of those. Yeah, and, and you know, the, the thing is those look a lot like the Gem Juniors. Uh, the Gem right. Junior you can get for like $350. The gem vine white is probably two grand. There's a big difference. In the 80s, hot rodding your, your Strat became a big deal. So, I mean, between Duncan and DiMarzio, they pretty much, at the time, cornered the market on aftermarket pickups. I mean, it was, it was one or the other at that time. Yeah, I wonder why he chose these over uh, Seymour Duncan's. I don't know. Larry DiMarzio probably cut him a better deal, or maybe he right. liked the sound. I mean, let's face it. His sound is hot, and these pickups are hot. DiMarzio makes a hot pickup. It's not, it's not a pickup that you put in your guitar for the subtleties of it. I mean, it's a screaming pickup. Right. Um, and for what he does, although that having been said, um, you back this thing off. I mean, like, like any decent guitar, um, not everything always has to be on 10. Right. You know, that's why when, when Eddie Van Halen made his guitars, he only put one volume knob on them uh, originally because... You can get all the thing, all the tones you need just by backing it off a little bit. Right. So you put this thing on a clean channel and you back it off, and you'll get a creamy, a strat-like tone in it. So that's, but, that's true. But they're not. You can't get these pickups anymore with this guitar. Well, you can't get this guitar anymore. The seven seven sevens haven't been made for a long time. Uh, the seventy sevens are tough to find. The original ones. Now they've got the Prestige series, which are like Indonesian, where I think you can still get the seven seven FP, which is the blue floral pattern one. It's a I think that does have a maple oh, neck. Those blue ones are neat. Yeah, I think that does have a maple neck with uh, with the vine in it, with the blue vine down the neck. And it's interesting because if you'll notice, none of the green has faded with the exception of the headstock. Right. It's faded just a little bit from the age of the guitar. You're talking about a 30-year-old guitar. Uh, original tuners and everything have already started to, you know, they've, they've oxidized and tarnished a bit. The nuts tarnished a bit. But I don't want to change anything on it. You know, uh, it did get refretted about 10 years ago, but the frets are, are still good. The, these, the frets on these are, I mean, you're talking about a 30 year old guitar. This was used pretty significantly when it was first bought. What, what's the story on here? You'll Let me shut the case and we can set it yeah, up. Yeah, you'll see the back and the back up by the heel, and we'll do this just so people what can. What is the story on where, where'd you find this thing? Believe it or not, uh, I found it at a large guitar retailer, um, and it was an employee. Sort of, let's say, the center of the guitar uh, world, huh? Yeah, a, a play, and it was interesting because if you go to the large guitar retailer, mm -hmm. um, the good guitars are kept out of the hands of people who will drop them and play with them. They hang them way high. That's um, right. And I happen to be looking online and it was allegedly an employee of said establishment, his own guitar, and he had brought it in, I wanted to say like the Friday before. It made it through the weekend and I saw it on a Monday and went down there immediately that day. I was like, no, I can't let this go because 
you can search right now. Go ahead and search Reverb or search um, eBay. Uh, search around. You may see one or two of these online for sale. Now, that's how they're getting really scarce. They made more of these because they made them for four years. They made more of these than they did the shocking pink, desert yellow, and Loch Ness green ones. Those were only made for like two years. This one was made for four years, but you still don't see them. And one of two things has happened, either... What do you call the green color again? I call it Steve Vai green, but it's, okay. it's Loch Ness green is what he calls it. Hmm. Um, and you'll notice the original gems, the one he played, was that this was all the green. The green was that color of the body. And if you can find one of those um, in good condition, you'll pay anywhere from you know, $3,500 to six, dollars $7,000 for them. Um, and they're all hand-signed. He, Steve Vai signed 777 guitars. He doodled on some of them. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of them are signed, are signed either back here on the body or on the, on the plate. Mm -hmm. um, and if you have one, people will remove the plate. Oh, I need a screw. Um, they'll remove the plate and replace it with something else. But these are becoming really, really tough to find now. And uh, I've... Uh, I've passed on them in the past, and I wasn't going to pass on this one. Well, good for you, man. That's a great, great guitar to have in your collection. Well, what do you think? You going to let me plug this thing in and play it a little bit? Yeah, here it is, man. That's Steve Vai. Yeah. Yeah. The frets feel great on this thing. I love this thing, man. Can I borrow this for like no, you a cannot. month or so? No. <laughs> Dies to be played Super for it. Just, cool, it just man. wants you to play it. I, I feel like I don't even have the guitar skills necessary yeah. to hold this guitar. Yeah, it's one of those ones you have to earn to play. <laughs> Thanks a lot for watching. Uh, this was one of my customer showcase videos that I did today. If you want to participate, bring your guitar on in and uh, you'll be able to show off and kind of brag about the cool guitars that you have. So uh, thanks again for watching, guys.